Afternoon, everyone. Um, it's very good to be here today. I'm a mechanical engineer that um, has been involved in the design of different type of products for industry like uh, the aerospace, um, the NHS, but also fast moving consumer goods. You would expect mechanical engineers to design products, but what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to design experiences. So the intangible that is the interface between product technology and um, people. So we are in a moment in which we know that um, there is more and more interest uh, from uh, consumers in uniqueness. Consumers tend to have higher expectation. So we need to ask the question, you know, how can we provide this uniqueness? Before answering this question, let's go back you know, to the evolution of our economy. We used to have an agrarian economy that evolved into an industrial economy. And that was replaced by a service and an experience economy, which is where we are now. Right at the start, we had uniqueness through craft. Then this was lost. Now, in the service and experience economy, we have a chance to bring back some of this aspect, you know, by designing personalized and meaningful experiences. Why we can do that? First, because uh, there is technology to measure what each customer wants. Second, because uh, there is technology in terms of manufacturing that allow us to get to more personalized objects. Think about, for example, 3D printing or flexible manufacturing. But the real question that I want to talk about here is how did we get from selling product to staging experiences? When I was a child, you know, my mom um, used to bake my birthday cake starting from very simple ingredients. And this would cost literally pennies. Over time, there has been a trend towards uh, buying cakes you know, from shops, and nowadays you can buy them online, you can personalize them, uh, you can add uh, um, the name of your child. At present, I'm a busy parent. I don't buy a cake anymore. I buy fun, I buy amusement, joy for my for my son and their friends. So the cake is just a part of a much bigger offering that we get. So as humans, we tend to seek meaning by um, the things that we surround us with. They do matter to us, you know, they, they, they make meaning to our life. So to design personalized experience, we need to understand why and how we own things. We also need to think that you know, the majority of the product service system that we interact with you know, tend to be hybrid in various ways. They are physical and digital, but they also, I believe, own. You know, think about you know, the social network that we mentioned in previous talk. We feel that we possess them, they're deeply ours, but in reality, content can be pushed into it, the content can be headed. Um, so they're not completely ours. If we don't think about these issues, things can go wrong for business. Think about the example of Apple. Apple decided at some point to push into the music libraries of uh, the user the U2 album. So no matter whether people like or not U2, they felt that their personal collection was violated. The content was pushed without them wanting into it. So there was a big backlash. So when we're designing, we don't need to think only about technology. We need to think about everything that is around it. And the way to design, um, thinking about you know, why and how we all need to go through a human-centered approach. We need to understand deeply what is in the mind of people. What are the motives? Why do they want to own things? In my group, I've conducted research to answer this question. And we look at you know, the motives that are behind why we own. So efficacy, we own because we, we want to feel competent. We want to uh, be able to achieve our desired or intended results. We own because we want to edit our, or develop our identity, whether it is public, digital, or private. We also own because we want to have a, a place. We want to have a familiar place which gives us you know, emotional, physical, mental security. So the things that surround us really matter in this respect. 
We also look at uh, the route that you know people follow in order to own. People own by getting access and transforming the object that's around themselves, control. But they also own by acquiring intimate information and knowledge about you know the things that they have. So these are experience, memories about you know what they have. And they own also by investing time, money, and resources in, in the object that they get. So by looking at this principle, we think you know, that we can approach design from a different perspective, and we can consider a broad set of you know, uh, intangible aspects. So I want to give you an example now, looking at you know, the design of shared cars. What can we learn from how uh, people use private cars. We know that a car is not just a, a vehicle to move from A to B. For many people, it's, it's a personal place. It's a familiar place. It's a place to carry memories of trips that we've done with relatives and family. So if we are thinking about design share car, cars that you know, will be accessed every time by different people, how can we provide, you know, for example, the motive of having a place when this place would be always a different one for, for the different users that you know, we have? So as an example, we can think about you know, providing opportunity to control some of the setting that we have. We can have you know, ways you know, to think about adjusting your seat, adjusting the height of your steering wheel, um, or thinking about adjusting your mirror. Um, as much as kind of you know, going into some of the other accessories that a car has. So you can expect a car to know about your preference in terms of music, and therefore provide you know, what you want. So every time we could you know, have a different place for the different user that you know, we have. So I want to close this by um, going back to some of the points that I made. If we want to design personalized experience, we need to think about um, more than the technology. We need to think about why we own and how we own, and we need to take a human-centered approach.